Welcome to the third part of the Evergate 2 webinar series on multi-energy networks. My name is Edmund Wiedel. I'm a researcher at the Austrian Institute of Technology. Among other things, I work on the assessment and simulation of multi-energy systems. In the first part of the webinar series, you heard about co-simulation and why it is relevant for the assessment of future energy systems, specifically multi-domain systems. In the second part, you learned about the basics of using the Mosaic framework for co-simulation. In this part, in the third part, I will give an example of using Mosaic for multi-energy network applications. I will start with an overview of the example application. I will introduce you to the system configuration of the multi-energy network, and I will introduce you to the controllers that are required to operate the system. Then I will give an overview of the reference implementations of this example. I will go into the details of the co-simulation setup and some implementation details regarding the models that are used here. Finally, I will guide you through a hands-on exercise that is also available online. So let's start with the application itself. We have a system configuration that comprises an electrical and a thermal network. We have some consumers and generation units, and we have a power to heat facility. This setup is simple on purpose in order to focus on the concept and use of co-simulation for multi-energy systems. However, later on, when we run the demo, you will see that in the results, some of the interactions are actually quite complex. We have an electrical network that constitutes two consecutive lines and they're connected to an external electrical grid. And we have a thermal network that comprises three main consecutive pipes with supply and return lines each, and they're also connected to an external thermal grid. There's two consumers, each of the consumers is connected to both networks and they basically represent aggregated loads of an urban quarter. There are also generation units. In this case, it's PV systems for each consumer. Probably the most interesting part of the setup is the power to heat facility, which comprises a heat pump and a hot water storage tank, and it couples both networks. To operate this facility, we use the so-called flex heat controller and this controller determines whether the heat supply is covered entirely through the external grid or if the power to heat facility supports by discharging the tank. In addition, there is a voltage controller that uses the power to heat facility as a controllable load. It monitors the voltage at consumer 1 and then adjusts the power consumption set point for the heat pump. Whenever the heat pump is activated, it is actually used to charge the tank with hot water. Here, detailed view of the electrical network. So you see it's really quite simple with just two buses connected by lines. You see the PV systems as generators. The consumers are represented as electric loads and also is the heat pump. A detailed view of the thermal network. You can again see the consumers. They are fed with hot water from the supply line and the cold water returns to the external grid via the return line. The return line is also the cold water source for the tank, and it is the cold water source for the evaporator of the heat pump. You see the flex heat controller, which controls two pumps. The one pump basically moves the hot water from the condenser from the heat pump to the storage tank, and the second pump moves the hot water from the storage tank to the supply line of the thermal network. The voltage controller is monitoring the voltage at bus 1 and it um, calculates power consumption set points that are used to adjust the voltage within acceptable limits. The controller basically implements a step controller and sends its output to the flex heat controller. The flex heat controller then regulates the heat supply for the thermal network. It operates the power to heat facility to supply additional heat from the tank. Whenever required, the heat pump is used to charge the tank, but this is always done respecting the power consumption threshold from the voltage controller. Looking at the diagram, you can see that the flex heat controller operates in several modes, depending on the tank temperature and the power consumption threshold from the voltage controller. Depending on the mode, the heat pump is turned on or off, or the tank, the tank is supplying heat to the system or not. This example is implemented as a co-simulation setup and published as a simulation benchmark. This benchmark contains detailed documentation of 
everything that I just touched briefly in the previous slides. So we have a detailed description of the system configuration with all subsystems and controllers and also all the test cases. And it provides two reference implementations of the simulation setup. The benchmark is available on GitHub under the link provided here. The benchmark uses co simulation for simulating the multi energy system. It uses domain specific simulation tools for all the different domains, in our case, power, heat, and control. And by partitioning the system under test into several subsystems, we can implement each subsystem with a dedicated simulator. We use the Mosaic co simulation framework, and this again uses Panda Power for the electric subsystem and standalone implementations in Python for the controllers. I mentioned before, we provide two reference implementations in this benchmark, and those two differ by the simulators used for the thermal domain. More specifically, uh, we use the Python package Panda Pipes, which is developed at the Fraunhofer Institute for Energy Economics and Energy System Technology and the University of Kassel. And the other reference implementation uses the Modelica library Disiclip, which is developed at the AIT Austrian Institute of Technology. The reason why we provide two reference implementations is twofold. First, we want to highlight the flexibility of using co-simulation for systems like this. Second, we want to demonstrate different approaches and also highlight the advantages for modeling the thermal domain. By comparing both results, you may find which best suits your needs in case you want to do something similar. Let's take a look how the two approaches actually differ. On the one hand, we have Panda Pipes, which implements a so-called pipe flow calculation that is a static or quasi-static analysis of the balanced fluid system, and it computes temperature, pressure, and velocity distributions in the pipe networks. The DC clip, on the other hand, implements a so-called plug flow calculation, which allows the analysis of thermohydraulic transients in the fluid systems. This again allows to look at if phenomena like flow reversals and time delayed propagation of fluid properties in the pipe system. The approaches differ also in the way that you do the modeling. Panda Pipes uses Python, so basically it's text-based modeling in the editor. The DC clip, on the other hand, is a Modelica library, so we can use uh, available Modelica editors for the modeling of the system. And typically, as is uh, indicated here by the screenshot, you can do it in a graphical editor. They also differ in the way you do tool coupling for co-simulation. Panda pipes implement so-called controllers that implement these coupling points. They can read values from one network. They apply basically efficiency factors and unit conversions and then write the results to another network. And for more advanced use cases, you can use Panda Pipes API for the tool coupling directly in Python. The DC clip, on the other hand, is, as already mentioned, a Modelica package. So you can export models as standalone executables according to the functional mockup interface specification. And this enables a straightforward coupling with any other FMI compliant simulation tool. The both tools also differ in terms of availability. Panda Pipes is a publicly available open source Python package, and since Python is also publicly available and open source, Panda Pipes can be used without a commercial license. DCLib is also a publicly available open source Modelica library. However, for compiling the models created from the DCLib to an executable, the proprietary Daimler simulation tool is required. I propose to you to take a look at both implementations, the one using Panda Pipes and the one using the DC clip. In the following slides, I will give you some, or I will show you some insights of how you can use the DC clip for modeling the thermal domain. Modelica is an object oriented language, which means that basically you can represent all the parts and all the subsystems of your uh, whole setup as component models. Looking here at this screenshot from, uh, a Modelic, uh, from, a Modeli, from a Modelica editor, you can see here that this basically breaks down to having different components for all the parts in the setup that I described before. So example for the thermal network model, 
you can represent the external grid connection as a as a, as an individual component. You can represent the consumers as individual components, but the same, of course, uh, goes for the pipes or the pipe junctions. Similarly, it allows a quite intuitive modeling also of the power to heat facility. So for example, you have a component model for the supply line and the return line, but also for the heat pump and the storage tank. But it's not only the use of component models, it's also quite intuitive to model, for example, hydraulic loops. So in this case here on the left side, you see uh, the pump that moves the hot water from the heat pump to the storage tank. And similar to the other hydraulic loop, where the pump moves the hot water from the storage tank to the supply line of the thermal network, and at the same time draws cold water from the return line. To make these models available for the co-simulation, basically you can export them as standalone executables, so-called functional mock-up units or FMUs. For that, I, for that you can take the system model as I showed it before, and uh, use it as, as an individual block as such. And this is then augmented uh, with a PID controller for the mass flow through the heat pump condenser. I would encourage you to also take a look at how Panda Pipes uh, implements this, uh, this controller. So in order for you to understand how you could do it either using, for example, a language like Modeliger, or how you could do it in a way that Panda Pipes and, and other pipe models is uh, implementing this. This is then also, in addition to that, uh, augmented with some inputs for the set point from the flex heat controller and some outputs of the system that uh, go to the flex heat controller and the voltage controller. And that's the heat pump power consumption and the tank temperature. What I showed you so far is all available online via Binder. So you can follow this link to actually try this out yourself to use this. Either you follow the link or you can also go to the website of um, the simulation benchmark and then click on the launch Binder button. I will do that now. I will switch to my browser. So you can see here the repository on GitHub. If, you, if I scroll down a bit, I have the launch binder button, and if I click that, I will be redirected to, to binder, which uh, it will take some time, but which will start a container in the background that runs, uh, that runs the example. So it's now starting up JupyterLab. When it starts up, the first thing you should see is this uh, welcome screen. To get started, you can click here on the left side on the browser symbol and open up the browser. You'll see here two folders. One is called precise documentation. If you go there, you will find all the documentation for the whole system configuration and the test case and the use case and so on. Uh, a very detailed uh, documentation of the whole example. For example, if I go to the uh, documentation for the system configuration, you will find a very detailed uh, description of what I showed you before in the slides and actually much more. And the same goes for the controllers and everything else. Going back to the root, uh, going back to the root folder, there in the other folder, implementation files, if you go there, you will find two folders that uh, contain uh, the implementations, the reference implementations that I told you before. I will use the one that uses this heatlib, but as I said before, I strongly encourage you to also look into the Banda Pipes implementation. Going here to the this heatlib folder, again, there's two subfolders, the resources folder, if you click through it, you will find several, uh, for example, uh, time, uh, time series and, and things like this that serve as an input to, to the simulators. In the simulator subfolder, you will find the implementation of all the different uh, simulators that are coupled using Mosaic. The implementation of the benchmark itself, of the simulation benchmark, is here in this benchmark multi-energy file. 
So I won't go here. I won't go through in detail. But basically, if you take a closer look, you will find that uh, everything that's done here is basically similar to what you should have already learned in the second part of the webinar series. To run it, you can go to the benchmark multi energy sim notebook. I will simply do that, go step by step. So basically, here in this first line, it imports the, sim uh, the implementation that I just scrolled over before. It defines a stop time for the simulation. It defines a step size. Here I have a parameter that determines if the voltage controller is enabled or not. I leave it to true for now. And I have another parameter that uh, determines the output file name for the result. If I continue here, basically now what's happening is uh, the typical thing that you should already know from the second part. So I start Mosaic World. I initialize my simulators. So you see some log messages here that indicate that they have successfully started. I load some profiles. I retrieve the entities of the simulators. I connect them. And I add a data collector that will uh, connect, collect all the results for further analysis. And finally, again, you should already know that from the part, second part of the webinar, I have a simulation loop that runs the Mosaic uh, model. If you run that, you have kind of a progress bar here. The simulation takes one to two minutes uh, until it's finished. It took about two minutes to finish the simulation. And after it's finished, you should see here a new file called benchmark results control enabled which contains all the results from the simulation run. Before I analyze the content of this results file, I will run the simulation a second time, but this time with the voltage controller disabled. To do that, I change the parameter voltage control enabled to false, and also to store the simulation results with a new file name, I also change the out file name parameter. Then I simply rerun the whole simulation. Again, this should take about two minutes or so. After the second simulation run has finished, you should see the corresponding results file here in the browser. To analyze the results, I run the, the notebook benchmark multi energy analysis. Okay, you can just run it step by step. First, I load the result files. Then, as a first step, I plot some results from the simulation run with the voltage control enabled. I won't go into the details here and leave it up to you to explore what's really happening here. But it's quite interesting to see from these plots how the voltage controller and the flex heat controller interact and what they and how they uh, actually operate the heat pump and, and, and so on. So we can see that basically here from the resulting profiles of uh, the, uh, the tank temperature, or you can see it here in the power consumption of the heat pump and similarly uh, uh, the, control the controller responses and set points uh, from the voltage controller and flex heat controller. And finally, also here in the, uh, uh, in, the, in the time series of the voltage levels and the line loadings in the electrical network. The same thing you can also compare with uh, the results from uh, the run with the voltage controller disabled, you will, if you compare it, you will see immediately there's a big difference. <clears throat> Again, I leave it up to you to, to go into detail here and, and, and try to find out what is going on here. But finally, there's a, a couple of plots that, that will help you with that comparison. So for example, here's a comparison of, of the bus voltages, of the line loadings, 
tank temperatures. And finally, of the uh, heat pump power consumption. Coming back to the slides, I strongly suggest that you take a closer look at the hands-on demo and at the simulation benchmark. Apart from the thing that I, apart from the things that I already suggested, there's a lot of things that you can still ex explore here. For example, you could take a closer look at the implementation based on bundle pipes and compare the results with the one from the DC clip implementation. You will find that they basically agree, but that there are fine differences in, in, in what they see and what they can model. You could explore how this translates to the different modeling paradigms behind those tools. Or you could take a closer look at the source code. For example, you could take a closer look how the Python-based simulators are integrated into Mosaic, for example, Panda Power, Panda Pipes into controllers. Or you could also take a closer look how the disk clip model is integrated into Mosaic using the functional mockup unit. In conclusion, I hope you have seen that co-simulation is a powerful approach for the assessment of multi-domain energy systems. And you should have seen that Mosaic framework provides a versatile environment for co-simulation. In this, in this third part of the webinar series, I showed an example of using co-simulation for the assessment of a multi-energy network. In this example, you see how multiple domains are coupled, power, heat, and control here specifically. And you can also see in the benchmark how to connect those different domain-specific simulators in the real implementation. And finally, it enables the combined analysis of all the domains in really high detail. If you're interested in the subject, I recommend to you again to take a look at this uh, simulation benchmark available online on GitHub and to really dive into the online demo. If you're interested, please also take a look at Mosaic or the DCLib, Panda Pipes and Panda Power. With that, I hope that you enjoyed this webinar series and I hope that you will also enjoy the exercises.